So today's video is very different from the norm. I'm going to be making a costume. I'm making this in a series so that if you have to have a costume for whatever it is, you can kind of follow along and figure out how to make it yourself. I have two tutus already, but that's not any fun. Um, so we're going to make our own tutu and, and forget that I have those. Why am I making a costume? Buying a costume is so expensive. And it's a ton of fun to make a costume, and it is a lot more rewarding. And then you can tell everyone you made your, you made your costume. Um, I'm going to be making a white costume today because white can kind of cater to so many different roles. If I were to make like blue, that is very limiting. And plus, I already have a blue one behind that mirror in a bag. I probably need to take it out of the bag. Anyway, so today I will be showing you how to make a tutu, and this will be the first part to this series. So. Yeah, you'll learn a lot through this. Um, do I have any experience? Just just my own. <laughs> so what I have right here, this mess behind me is just random pieces of tool. Essentially what you want are three meters of tool. And I'm not gonna take credit for this um, pattern of a tutu or how to make a tutu. I was taught how to do this in my ballet school in Uruguay in South America by my repertory teacher. She all taught us how to make a tutu. So what you need is three meters of very stiff tool, the stiffest tool that you can get. And with each meter, the first one, you're gonna measure 70 centimeters and you're gonna cut straight down. So you're gonna be left with a 70 centimeter piece, long strip and a 30 centimeter long strip. That 70 centimeter, you're gonna fold in half and on the folded part, you're gonna do a running through stitch and that will be your top layer of the tutu. And the 30 centimeters will be the bottom most layer of the tutu. This tutu will have six layers. Then the second piece of tool, you're going to measure 65 centimeters and 35 centimeters, same thing. You're gonna cut, do the exact same thing. The 65 will be the second to top layer and the 35 will be the second to bottom. And then the last layer, you're going to measure 60 centimeters and 40 centimeters. 60 is gonna be the middle-ish layer and 40 is gonna be the other middle-ish layer. So there's a bit of a cutoff there. Um, well, that's it. Just three meters of very stiff tool, 70 meters or 70 centimeters, 65 centimeters and 60 centimeters. And then whatever is left will be the 30, 35 and 40. I'm explaining this just because I don't have a new tool, I have a lot of tool and I want to reuse it so I'm going to be trying to figure out how I'm going to do that, um, but you kind of get the gist of it. Okay, so something that you do need, now I just tore apart a old tutu that I had and I'm going to remake it um, because I realized that the tool that I have is not quite enough, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so what you're going to need is either a pair of pregnant women's underwear. So yeah, there's a bunch of threads here, but just ignore that. Um, so pregnant women's underwear or very high waisted underwear. It's really sunny right now. Anyways, um, yeah, so you can see normal underwear would probably end like that. This has like an extra four inches maybe. And that's what's gonna hold it on. And also we need it for the space for where we're gonna sew the tool on. So because this is already a sewn piece, you're gonna have to be really imaginative on this. So this is 60 centimeters. When you get your one meter of tool, this 60 centimeters will be attached with an extra 40 centimeters and that will be 100 centimeters, which is one meter. It's a bit different in the US, you go by yards, so I'll let you convert that because I'm not used to that. So um, yeah, that's how you'll be cutting it. You can fold it in half, it does make it simpler. Um, so let's say this is 60 and that's 40 when unfolded and you just, you cut. Once you have your pieces, you then fold that in half and then you sew with a running stitch through that until you get this long piece and how much uh, or how yeah how much you sew you need to make sure that you can get it over your hips because we're not doing an open back this is just going to be a pull on tutu so what you're going to do is you're going to take a very long piece of thread 
or two, it's easier with one, to make the running stitch and you're going to measure around your hips. You're gonna measure around your hips, so here at the widest point, not around your waist. It will sit on your waist, but you need to measure around your hips and them because it needs to get over, it needs to get over your bottom. <laughs> So as you can see with this layer, it's a fully finished layer. Um, it goes very loosely around my bottom <laughs> because you want to be able to get it past there. And then because it's sewn on a stretchy thing, it will, once it's up here, come in even more and it'll be even more so cinched. So there's nothing to worry about of it like falling off or looking or feeling loose so that this makes a bit more sense. Um, I'm taking this piece of cloth and we're just gonna pretend that it is a meter um, because I realized it was very confusing on how I explain this. So this is a meter, let's say. What we're doing with our meters worth of tool, it's longer than a real meter, whatever, but let's say this is a meter. You're gonna measure this way 60 centimeters and there you're going to cut a straight line down to where it is so with one piece 70 70 centimeters and 30 centimeters second piece 65 centimeters 35 centimeters 60 centimeters and 40 centimeters and you just cut and then with the cut pieces let's pretend this is a cut piece of 70 centimeters you're going to take it fold it in half like that and it's kind of tricky. You do need to pin it because you don't want it to be moving um, up and back like this. You want it to be exactly on the edges together. You're gonna pin it and then you're going to sew a running stitch through the folded side. It's really sunny right now. And then it cinches it. And then you do the measuring thing to make sure that it goes around your, your bottom. Okay, so I just cinched one of the layers, I don't know which layer this is, and just so that you can see, still got a ton of string here and I wanted to make a point of saying when you make the knot, you have to double string it. So you put the thread through and then you have to um, go through it. If not, then the knot is just going to go straight through the tool because the holes are so big. Anyway, um, yeah, so I have this now and what I'm going to do... I'm gonna pull it a bit so that I can make sure that it goes around my bottom. Ah, with a bit of overlap, you want it to be loose, which it does. And then from there, I'm just gonna pull it a tiny bit more, like maybe an extra centimeter, and then just make a knot. And the knot that I do, which you can do at the other end as well, my hip just cracked, is making sure that there's enough. Pulled it through, and then I'm gonna put the needle through this. And that's a knot and you do that like two three times and you can go through it a couple times and that's it and you repeat the same process with six different layers this is the not so difficult part lovely beautiful okay so I have redone all of the layers and we're just gonna layer them by longest layer so the top layer of the longest one 70 centimeters down to the 30 centimeters so we have 70 centimeters 60 centimeters, or 65 centimeters, um, 60 centimeters. I'm missing a layer, I put a layer somewhere. Anyway, so let's pretend that there's a third layer there, or a fourth layer, and then I sewed, never mind, all three layers I sewed together here. So what I did was I reinforced, because I wanted to make it more static and stiff, I took all three bottom layers. You can do this, you don't have to. It'll still be very inf like stiff and reinforced. It's just that this is old and the tool is a lot more limp. So if you wanna do this, you can. Once again, you don't have to. I took all three layers and I just stuck them, I pinned them together at the top where we cinched. And then with a sewing machine, I sewed around the whole thing and what this does it, it just made them more compact and they just kind of held better um, and it's already in a circle which is fine because we're going to be I'll show you what we're doing next but 
If you don't do that, you just stack all the next three layers and then you can see what it will look like. That's essentially what it will look like from below. This I do take credit for because I came up with this and you don't have to do this, but I'm going to because I want the last layer to not be so squinchy and squinched just because I am going to be putting details on this and it's easier to sew on something that's not a bunch of close layers. So what I did was I cut um, two centimeters longer than the last last layer of tulle. You can make it as long as the last layer of tulle or just slightly longer. And essentially it's a circle. So I cut a circle and then I cut a hole in the center and then I'm gonna cinch it. But because it's already a circle, it won't be quite as cinched. So it's still pretty stiff and it'll stay upright, but it won't have quite as much of that going on. It'll be a lot more just like less. and. This, you don't have to do this, it just, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it, but you don't have to. Um, so it'll have seven layers, but the top one is not double, it's just the one, and it's a circle. So, yeah. So what I'm doing next, this is gonna be with my circle layer, but if you're not doing the circle thing, you're gonna take your longest layer, which is the 70 centimeters. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take something, it can be a box, I'm gonna be using this thing, and we're going to be stretching our pair of pregnant women's <laughs> underwear on here. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, so essentially, we're doing this. Um, I forgot to mention before before you do this, because already, I already have it on here. I don't know if you can see that. There are um, seven different marks. So you're gonna start at the bottom line. You're gonna mark it, you're gonna measure a centimeter, you're gonna add another mark, measure a centimeter, another mark, and you're gonna do that seven times or six times, depending on how many layers you're doing, and that's where each layer is going. And you're gonna do this across. So you're gonna do markings here, I did more markings here, more markings here, just so that you have a guide so that it's not like wonky. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start with the top layer because you can't really sew with the bottom one. It's like really weird and awkward to sew starting with the bottom one. So we're gonna start with the top layer and sew down. Yeah. Me explaining how to actually sew it on was in time lapse, which was my my fault. Anyways, um, so the underwear is not inside out. It is right side out, and you are pinning the tool layers upward, facing upright, and you are sewing about a centimeter above the folded tool fold yeah and then when you flip it down as you'll see in a moment it'll look like a tutu so the first layer is sewn on if i flip it over that's what it'll look like it'll be a lot more elevated once it has the other layers this is of course just one layer so it doesn't have a ton to hold it up um, but essentially that's that's it you just continue to you just continue to sew on the layers. So the next layer I'm going to sew on is the 70 centimeters and I'm just going to put it about a centimeter below the, um, the one that I just sewed on and I'm going to sew it on and then it'll have an extra layer and then we just, we keep going. And it's as simple as that. Well, that's not so simple but yeah you get the gist of it so we're sewing the tool onto the underwear with a running stitch and you can sew it like x's as well but you don't have to with a running stitch steams seems to be the easiest and you're sewing it pretty loosely i put it on this box so that you can see that it's actually a bit easier to sew it on a box because it's standing upright and uh yeah that would pop off. I switched to a box just so that you can see it is a bit easier if you use something like that and it's standing upright. Anyways, so it's only been an hour. That's how long it took me. So it, it doesn't, you can do this in like the span of give or take three hours. Let's flip it. Okay, that was not smooth. It's a tutu. I mean, that's, it's amazing. You have a tutu now. Um, you can leave it like this and you're good to go. 
it'll be very fluffy. Um, or you can do what I'm going to do probably is you lay it flat first iron it now be very careful ironing and I can show you an example as to why you can can you see that you can see that I ripped it because it, I burned it essentially <laughs> um, so you need to keep the temperature very very low because this is basically plastic um, yeah so I would first put it upside down like this so the bottom iron that out and then flip it over and iron that out and you have yourself a tutu it is very cool it's pretty easy and you have tutu it's so much fun um yeah oh yeah and then after the ironing that's what i meant to say first iron it and then um, you need to make sure it's very flat. You're going to make stitches from the top, not the top layer, or you can from the top layer if you want to leave this as a rehearsal tutu, all the way through to the bottom most layer, just so that it stays together and doesn't... You can leave it like this tutu that I bought. Um, you can see that it's, it's just open. All the layers are like this, but that just makes it very floppy. So if you want to avoid that, you just put all the layers and then you would stitch them. With this one, you can't do that because the bottom layer is so, so far away from the top one. I mean, you could, but the stitch is going to be really close to the top. Um, but yeah, so for the stitching, this is what we did on the tutu that I made. I just want to clarify. We have, you can see it better on this one we're hand sewing it on and then you put the next layer and then you hand sew it on like that which is why we started from top to bottom because if you did it the other way it wouldn't really be easy but uh yeah tutu i know i'm wearing pants i'm just i'm not putting i'm, I'm yeah i'm not taking them off right now I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. That... <laughs> That's a pretty nice tutu, I must say. And if you sew it together, if you want to. I am i don't think I'm going to. I really like it, this floompy. And it's pretty, it's pretty compact. Um, but yeah, that is... That is essentially a tutu that you have made. And you have the um, the layer here, which is why you use pregnant underwear. If not, then it's not quite enough to pull up. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I have another tutu to add to my collection. One last important, I look so disheveled after this whole experience. Anyway, one last um, thing that you need to do when you're storing it, you want to hang it upside down. That way, when you wear it every time, it doesn't get flatter and flatter. It can stay nice and inflated. So yeah, you go and you hang it. And that's it. You have yourself a tutu. So this is part one of the series. I'm going to be making a costume, but if you only came to learn how to make a tutu, this is how you make a tutu. And it works and it looks pretty and it does not take you a lifetime to do it. So, and it's pretty simple. You don't have to have any skills with a machine or really any sewing skills at all. I just, in the end, ended up doing a running stitch and that's it. It worked. It looks like a disaster on the inside, but no one sees that. <laughs> As long as it doesn't fall apart, as you can see, it's just a running stitch. Two, two. Wait. I used to do this. This one doesn't flump out as much. Thank you for watching, and I, <laughs> I hope this was, uh, this was, um, yeah, helpful. If you wanted a tutu for probably an eighth of the price, there you go.